Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you very much for tuning in. I recently got a comment from a viewer who suggested I do a video all about the various types of amplification systems for keyboards, synths and digital pianos. What an excellent idea. So let's get on with it. Home digital pianos and keyboards usually have speakers built in, which is very convenient. Most professional synthesizers and workstation keyboards don't, and it's always been this way. I guess the assumption is that synthesizers will be used by pros performing on stage or in a studio environment where some high-end amplification system is available. But if you're playing at home or entertaining a small crowd, then built-in speakers are a really great choice if they are available. They are integrated into the instrument, of course, and usually sound great and produce decent volumes. I love my keyboards that have built-in amps and speakers. Talking of which, the amp is what produces the power. It amplifies up a small voltage into a large voltage that you use to move the loudspeaker cones backwards and forwards, which vibrates the air. I guess you know that, but just so we're all on the same page. Not really an amplification system, I know, but your next option is a pair of headphones. Now this is an excellent choice if you're playing for yourself and don't want to disturb anybody else in the room, or in the house for that matter. I would avoid earbuds and these fashion style headphones because they don't have an accurate frequency response and won't accurately reproduce the sound of your instrument. You should invest in some studio or hi-fi headphones and expect to pay $80 upwards, but you don't need to go crazy. Choose between open back phones that are more comfortable but leak sound in and out, or closed back headphones that isolate sound but for me, feel a bit claustrophobic and warm when using for longer periods. I always feel a bit dorky wearing headphones on my videos. Hey guys, welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Wow, he sounds so close to my speakers. I've got nine headphones for your music studio here today. At Sanjay did a really good presentation of some popular studio cans. That's slang for headphones. And he looks a lot cooler wearing them than I do. So go check out his video. Now, the headphone option will give you a really great reproduction of the sounds of your synth, perhaps the very best. But maybe this amplification system is not suitable for all occasions. But these are among the flattest headphones. Hey guys, I'm Woody, this is Piano Shack. Now today we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, a question I see a lot on the internet forums is what amplification system should I use for my... I've got great results by using PC multimedia style loudspeaker systems for playing synths and keyboards at home. Now, don't buy the cheapest set from Logitech or Creative and avoid the no-name brands as they won't have the power or size or the quality to produce the bass response and the high frequencies that you need when you're playing synths, keyboards and pianos. You'll need to look at the higher end models that are 2.1, meaning that there are two small desktop speakers and a subwoofer to reproduce the bass sounds. You put the subwoofer under the desk. Expect to pay around $100 to $150 to get a decent system. Remember that these systems only have one input since they are typically connected just to your PC's output. Sometimes there is an additional input for your phone, 
If you have many keyboards, you will need to connect them to a mixer first, which will combine them all into a single output. And you can use them with your PC or laptop or connect them to your TV as well for much better sound. So it's a pretty versatile setup and useful to have around. Just make sure that you don't buy a PC loudspeaker system that connects via USB, because you won't be able to connect that to your keyboard. But actually, good level, it's just turning it a little bit below 12 o'clock, I think. Sounds crisper. A traditional hi-fi amplifier and a pair of speakers is a convenient, affordable and great sounding amplification system if you're just playing at home. And no, you don't need to spend hundreds of thousands or buy cables for hundreds of dollars. Those hi-fi people. And this is the solution I use myself at home. I really like the sound and having a remote control for the amplifier is really nice because I also use this system for my monitoring and multimedia uses. Hi-Fi is modular, of course, so I can swap out the speakers or the amplifier separately if I want to. You might already have a hi-fi system, so give it a try. Remember that a hi-fi amp will only play one input at a time, so you'll need to use a mixer if you want to connect multiple synths and play them at the same time. I bought my hi-fi system secondhand for about 250 bucks. If you buy something new, you'll be paying about twice as much and upwards. The sky really is the limit here. 50, 60 hertz, I'm guessing, I don't remember, but I can't really hear very low sub bass with these at all. Series four, mm -hmm. uh, as I was just kind of mentioning. This is Studio monitors are probably the most popular and conventional solution for amplifying synthesizers and keyboards at home. Now, typically you'd buy a pair of active loudspeakers, meaning that one amplifier is built into each speaker for convenience and to save space and reduce all the cable clutter. If you have one keyboard, then you can connect the left output to one speaker and the right output to the other speaker. Now, if you're having multiple synthesizers and keyboards playing at the same time, you'll need a mixer again. Another common way to connect monitors is to first connect your keyboard or synth to a USB audio interface and then connect the interface to your speakers. This way you can then hear the sound of the synth and the sound from your computer system, which is how you do it in a home studio setup when recording and mixing. Here's the lovely Bo Beats showing off his monitors. Expect to pay a few hundred dollars for a pair of monitors, but a lot of home studio guys will be spending two or three times as much and the pros in a professional studio will be spending 10 times as much or more. As usual though, it's diminishing returns as you go up in price. A small mixing desk or a decent USB audio interface starts at about $100. Behind monitors to turn them on and off, not to say adjusting the volume, which can be a huge pain actually. If you're playing at home and occasionally playing out, you're doing gigs in smaller venues, then a dedicated keyboard amp combo is a traditional choice. The Roland KC range is one example of this. For some reason, these particular amps always get a really bad rap on the internet forums. And I'll tell you why I think that is in a second. They are definitely convenient though. They are self-contained with a mixer amplifier and speaker, everything built into one cabinet, and that's why it's called a combo. Often there are two or more speakers, a woofer for the low end and a tweeter for the treble. The problem with most of these systems is that they are mono, monophonic. Connecting a digital piano to a mono amp sounds terrible. The outputs of your digital piano are in stereo. Not only do you lose the stereo width, but the sound of the piano can cancel 
cancel itself out when summing the left and right signal to a single input. So please, avoid this at all costs. It sounds awful. Some of the most expensive keyboard amps actually have two speakers and stereo inputs. So these are usually the uh, high-end options. They are very powerful, bulky, and maybe overkill for your needs. Well, I have also seen some small battery-powered keyboard amps. It would be interesting to check out. And with the ability to plug in a mic and an MP3 player too, you've got a portable PA that's easy to set up and won't break your back. Custom Deluxe Reverb, and I'm here to talk about a couple of the key features. And uh, you might be surprised to learn that a guitar amplifier can make an excellent keyboard amp for some sounds and in some applications. It's one of the most classic circuits of all amps of all time. This uh, is one of my favorite amps, and this here... I used to jam with some jazz musicians in a rehearsal room that had a 1970s Fender Deluxe tube amplifier. And the guitarist and I used to fight over who would get to use that amp. I was playing a Nord Electro and the Fender Rhodes and Whirly piano sounds were fabulous through that old tube amp. Many digital keyboards have amp simulators built in, but you can't beat the sound of the real thing with that lovely tube saturation and overdrive giving a really warm and thick sound. Tons of volume too. Guitar amps go really, really loud, maybe because they don't have to reproduce much bass, which is the challenge for keyboard amps. The spring reverb in the amp sounded wonderful too. Organ sounds were pretty nice as well, although they won't sound great with your digital Leslie simulator, the rotary speaker, which is often in stereo. But give it a try if you ever get the chance, you might be pleasantly surprised. A nice guitar tube amp is about $300 upwards, although a gorgeous vintage Fender amp or reissue might be a few thousand. I should make a video about this topic one day. If you think you might be gigging with your keyboards, then a compact all-in-one PA system is an excellent option. The Yamaha Stage Pass was one of the first systems to embrace this concept, although other brands are available. I really like this design. You get a pair of speakers and a combined mixer and power amp built in that you can plug your instruments into. There are several inputs. You can have many different keyboards, amps, perhaps a MP3 player connected at the same time. And you can, of course, connect microphones for singing or talking to your adoring audience. They often have useful live effects, such as compression, delay, and reverb. These are also not too large, and you can use them at home too, although it might be overkill and not particularly high fidelity, so you maybe wouldn't use them for mixering or mastering, and you might not get the optimum sound from your keyboards at low volume. Certainly, you won't be lacking for bass and power. You'll pay about 500 bucks for a system like this. A pair of active or powered PA, that's public address speakers, are a very popular choice these days for keyboard players that are gigging. And you can also get excellent results with them at home. They are also really good for parties and discos. And you'll find yourself very much in demand once word gets out that you have a set. So these are professional PA speakers, often in rugged and molded plastic cabinets, and each speaker has a high power woofer and a tweeter, and the amplifier is built into each speaker. So you just plug it into the wall, the electricity there, and you're good to go. You'll probably be using a mixer between your keyboard and the speakers. So just connect the left out to the left speaker, and the right output of the mixer to the right speaker. And connect a mic if you want to the mixer if you need it. If you just want to play a single keyboard, then you can connect directly from the keyboard to the speakers. Now these give the absolute best sound for playing out live, as you can run your keyboards in stereo, and active PA speakers give a very good sound quality at very high volumes. Look for something with 6 to 10 inch woofers for small venues, 
and 12 to 15 inch speakers, woofer cones for larger rooms. You can also get really good results at home with these speakers and you'll never ever want for more bass or power. So I hope you found that helpful and maybe it reinforced the idea that if you are spending a significant amount of money on a synth or a keyboard, then you should also be considering carefully what kind of keyboard amplification system you need to buy to get the best out of the instrument and to really do it justice. Apologies then for the amount of B-roll that was in this video. I don't have a lot of that gear to hand right now, although I have owned a lot of it over the years. And many thanks to Bo Beats, Sanjay C, for letting me use some of their clips. And I took the liberty of including some footage from the manufacturer's videos as well, but I don't suppose they'd mind if I'm promoting their videos. Was there a category that I overlooked or perhaps a recommendation you have for a specific system? I'd love to hear from you down in the comments. Thanks so much. Well, that's all for today then. Thank you ever so much for watching, liking, subscribing. I'll see you next time. Cheerio. Bye.